Great intro. Great intro. Good to see you, man. Hello. Good morning. How is everyone? Great. Strong room. I like it. I wanted to, I wanted to thank Tommy uh, real quick. I, I wouldn't be up here today if Tommy hadn't hosted all that video game stuff on television all those years ago. So thank you for laying the path to this moment for me, Tommy. I appreciate it. Uh, Yes, uh, yes, very much so. Um, so thank you guys for joining us. Obviously, uh, AR is a very futuristic term, and we're very excited to cover off on that. But the one thing I want to do before we get into that stuff is set up who you are. Uh, Ross, if he were to have a book written about his life, it would be from the llama farm to now. And I want you to explain <laughs> what that means, a little bit of your background, and then we'll get into what you guys are doing at night. Uh, I I swear this is becoming really the, the brand of me. Um, I grew up in uh, Idaho. <laughs> um, my dad has a llama farm up there. So then, of course, everyone who works with llamas goes naturally hardcore into robotics. Um, so then I went to Carnegie Mellon and then MIT uh, for graduate school studying robotics. And then uh, from there, uh, worked on or co-founded a startup called Escher Reality, um, where we were doing computer vision uh, algorithms for augmented reality applications. So we were building what's now called the AR cloud. And then we went through the whole startup path, and then we were acquired the end of uh, 2017, beginning of 2018, um, by Niantic. So then now I help um, lead up and architect some of the AR teams that we have within Niantic. So, so TLDR, grow up on a farm, become the smartest person in the world. It's very simple. If you have children, put them on a farm now. Everything will be fine. <laughs> um, and w what's really, I think, important about what you just said, besides the fact that, again, you're the first person I met that's grown up on a farm like that, um, is that you aren't necessarily a gamer. And a lot of the people you work with and the technology that you guys are developing weren't really developed with gaming in mind, yet it's kind of become synonymous with probably the most successful AR video game experience of all time. Yeah, so if you think about the, or my background is more on the computer vision side, and then connecting that to gaming, the, there's, there's kind of different value propositions that you can have as you're evaluating a startup in the augmented reality space. And then we just started our company before Pokemon Go came out, and when Pokemon Go came out, then there's a huge rush, rush of people into the gaming space. So then while my background was not in gaming, um, as a startup founder, then you kind of follow the market. And then we went into it and approached the, or studied and approached the gaming space and was really adopted by the community. It was really, like, I really, really love the gaming community just because it's a very happy, nice group of people who all work together in different jobs. But no, most of the augmented reality technology today um, actually comes from the robotics uh, background because for augmented reality, there's the reality part. You need to understand reality in order to augment it. And then the connection between robotics and augmented reality is actually that if you want to put a Pikachu on a table um, or have a c robot put a cup on a table, you still need to understand the table in the same way. So it's either a digital interaction, AR, or a physical interaction, robotics. Um, so then a lot of the people that we hire come from like robotics, self-driving cars, drones, um, to help build out the technology needed that is for the gaming space right now. Yeah, and let's talk a little bit about uh, the direction. When you guys go in to develop a product or kind of roadmap the landscape of what you guys are, are, are building and putting out, uh, you mentioned the gaming community and having been a part of it for 20 years, and I know a lot of people in this room are on the journalism side, so you know if you, if you speak to the audience, the audience is very cool with speaking back to you and telling you exactly what they think about what your opinion is in that space. Um, so the gaming community, really great, um, but super vocal about what they, they, they want and how they want to experience the stuff that you're working on. Um, how much of that uh, feedback from the audience directly influences the direction of the work that you guys are doing? Uh, so at least in terms of what we're doing now, there's kind of two different feedback mechanisms. One is where the general market is going, which if you're trying to build up a platform in the augmented reality space, you need to listen and kind of understand. Um, I think the saying is going to where the puck is going rather than where it is right now. Um, but then second is because since joining Niantic, there is, we've had a very nice iteration loop where you can talk with the people who are actually making the augmented reality games. Like Niantic is the biggest um, kind of company working on augmented reality games at the moment. Um, but then, or at least directly. Um, but then just having that iteration cycle within like where you can stand up, walk over like three desks to the people who are making the augmented reality experiences right now and say, hey, here's this computer vision technology. 
and then how, how can you use it? So then being able to do, it's actually kind of a, a translation in between the different teams, because if you think about like coming from the academic computer vision space, if you say, oh, well, we have monocular depth estimation, and you hand that to like a game designer, and they're like, I don't know what to do with this. Um, and then being able to say, okay, they, they come at it from a different direction, and just having a very quick iteration cycle to discover where are technologies actually useful in the direct applications um, for gaming, and also kind of predicting where they're going to be, um, or in Niantic's case, actually creating where they're going to be. Yeah. It's interesting that you say creating, because I do believe that you guys are kind of defining AR in the gaming landscape. But there are a lot of other people doing it. We talked about this on the phone. Yeah. There are a lot of other people doing this in a lot of other fields. Are you looking at some of what people are doing in the medical device space or the military space and saying, wow, that could be really cool as a gaming application? Uh, so there's different technology. So th there's kind of two ways in which to think about that. One is kind of funneling in the knowledge from these other areas, which kind of the, the root technology, because it does get down to world understanding, um, is approached from many different directions. So then we try and study that as best as possible to figure out, one, what is a generalized uh, kind of platform that you need to build so that it can benefit not just the gaming space, but all other um, application spaces as well, prioritized by gaming at the beginning. Um, but then as you, <clears throat> like, as you begin to understand this technology and kind of creating it, we can also help define what are the experiences that make, that make augmented reality kind of what it can be because we can touch tens of millions, hundreds of millions of people all, all around the world. So then it is kind of this funneling in of knowledge, but also like it, a lot more of a creative process too in terms of trying to create that experience because like before like ingress location-based gaming really wasn't like, there was a couple people working on it, but then that made a small kind of cult community. And then with location-based gaming with an augmented reality spin on it, then Pokemon Go helped build that whole area. And now a lot of the industry, like, I'm not trying to do a marketing puff piece, you just can't avoid talking about uh, AR without Pokemon Go. So, <laughs> which is one of the reasons I guess I'm here. Yeah, uh, and it, it, I'm glad that you brought that up because at the end of the day, the most important question I believe to gamers is, how do you take this and make it fun? So when yes. you talk about building this stuff out and the things you're focused on, at the end of the day, we, we've all gone and tried to catch something outside of our office, at least in 2017, 2018. Maybe some of us still do it because we have a six-year-old. Also, I'm a six-year-old. Um, but you know, as you think about the future and the development of what you guys are doing, at the end of the day, how are you making it fun? Well, there, there's just a lot of kind of testing because there's, there's kind of two different aspects of what what makes something fun? First is the novelty factor, which is where a lot of augmented reality is today. Mm -hmm. um, and then there is kind of what are, the, what are the new mechanics that you can work to create new kind of game loops that make people want to come back to it. So then like we released the AR photo feature and now that like had significant takeoff where hey, you can take or stage photos with the different Pokemon that you catch and play all that. <laughs> but one of the problems in the AR market right now just all of you kind of listening here, um, the technology is kind of a couple generations ahead of the application space. So right now, a lot of the technology that's being built right now is kind of a, if you build it, they will come and predicting the future, which helps create the future, but then finding where the fun is by most of the industry, and then we're working really hard. It's one of the priorities we have within Niantic is to make sure that the technology and the application space actually kind of that gets compressed down, so then you can have this iteration cycle. Because like some of the new stuff that the, plat the larger platform companies are putting out there, it's really hard to bring that back in and make sure, hey, here's a fun experience into why someone will use this. Um, if you think about from a technology standpoint, what is new about augmented reality? There's kind of two main tech mechanics that make it AR versus any other game. First is the position of the device matters. So like, if you have a shooting game, if you dodge left, then you will miss the projectile that's being thrown at you. Um, so then being able to move around. So that's where a lot of AR is today, um, and has been for actually the last two years since AR Kit and AR Core came out. Second thing is the real world becomes content. I've talked about this before, but like thinking about what is the content of the world? How do you interact with it? How can games change based off of where, you're, where you are and what you're doing there? 
So like, if you're by a beach, then are there more water Pokemon coming out? Are you in a colorful room? Can that change the balancing aspect of a game? So at least the two areas, one, the position of the device, and two, the real world becoming content, that's really where most of the kind of new game loops are being explored at the moment, both by Niantic and outside of Niantic. And let's talk about the device specifically. Uh, I come from kind of an entertainment background. I worked in TV for a number of years, and then I went to digital. Um, and you, when you develop a piece of content, a piece of video content, you, do, you typically develop for both at the same time. But we're finding that a lot of, uh, of companies are now very focused on not only mobile first, content execution, but mobile only content execution. Yeah. And what Pokemon Go did really well, I thought, was that you could really only do that on a mobile phone. So you're incentivizing people that are already holding this thing all day long to experience the product that you've developed. And as you guys develop applications, are you thinking about, you know, this is only gonna be on a phone, or this is only gonna be in whatever sort of headgear we're wearing? Uh, how does that work? So, I mean, there's kind of a, a certain magic that you can have when you um, kind of make a native only experience, something that can only work on there. Like Angry Birds can be played on a desktop. You can drag the cursor and move it. Um, Pokemon Go, you can't really play that by sitting on your couch. Um, you can't even play that with an iPad. Um, so then if you're going walking around, then, then you can begin to play it. So then that was, for that style of technology, something you could only do on a mobile phone. Now as AR technology advances, beyond the first version of it that was used in Go, then, then you can have kind of experiences where you can like play laser tag and shoot at people and run around, something that you can only do on a mobile phone. And then what's really interesting is as you start to get into headsets, and we're already kind of looking at this and experimenting, is what are the certain applications you can do? So if you don't have your hand up on like, okay, how can you do this if you have hands? What is it like to run around? What is that? emotional experience, because there is the, the technology that changes it, but technology is, an or technology is not an application, and technology is two steps away from a customer. So then solving that middle step, that emotional thing, like in the gaming space has kind of been adopted by the community, it's all about delighting the users. Um, if technology does not delight the users, then it's not worth building, um, or at least kind of if either in the short term or even thinking about it in the longer term. So maybe it could delight the users in like a couple years, but uh, no, finding that emotional component and making things that are native to the platforms that you work on can really make them magical and unique. So then it's not something that people have seen before. So you can touch on the novelty aspect, but then also develop new game loops that people haven't been able to think of before because they, they were just weren't available. So like, Pokemon Go, like, there's no, you can play this with like a Garmin hiking GPS like 10 years before. Um, it's something that was entirely new. If you think about like apps that are native to the environment, like say Uber, for example, that is native primarily to mobile phones. You can't do that on an iPad, hard to do that on a desktop. Maybe you could call somebody, but that is native to the experience. And we're gonna see more and more of that in AR and headsets. If any of you are driving a white Toyota Corolla, you're in a lot of trouble right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're, not, if you're not from California, that's an Amber Alert. Maybe it's a nationwide. Oh. oh. Um, <laughs> and I want to talk about that middle step a little bit more. Uh, you know, are, are you guys, is it, the feedback that you're getting from, from the consumer base, are, are you more driven to develop for a platform they already own, like a mobile device, or are you seeing an opportunity to develop your own hardware? Maybe this is a spoiler for you don't want to release kind of what you guys are working on, but are you seeing a, a demand for kind of an all-in device that isn't necessarily something they already own? Uh, so this gets into, like, there is a massive predicted demand, and, like, there, there's kind of a, there's a major fight that's happening right now in the AR headset space, mm -hmm. because, like, the cell phone market is all saturated, and each one of the giants, like all the name brands that we know, is spending billions and billions of dollars like multiples of the Niantic market cap, which is pretty high, um, to kind of compete for this next platform race. Um, companies don't, like companies that missed out on mobile are, re are really doubling down to make sure that they don't miss out on augmented reality. Because if you think about AR, it's separating the screen from the phone and the computer, so then you can have the screen up in front of your eyes and then anything can become a screen. So as the platform race happens, then there's massive, massive investment 
into the headset space right now for the next computing platform. Like we are making investments in the hardware space. We're a little less interested in kind of building up a headset because Magic Leap with its $2.4 billion of fundraising is one of the most underfunded um, <laughs> companies in there. So like that's not a joke. Like they, we all think that's a massive amount. Um, a lot of these other companies are spending a lot more. So then uh, like we view that there's a major opportunity both in building the technology but then also like Niantic is the former Google Maps team, um, or the people that founded the company that Google bought to build up Google Maps. So then we think that this whole interfacing with the reality aspect is what we call a, a world operating system on top of the kind of the data of the world um, that can enable these types of experiences. Dude, somebody did some horrible shit. <laughs> okay, sorry. This is, uh, wow. I thought they were buzzing me to get off. <laughs> no, you're good. Unless that's the actual cue. Is that the actual <laughs> Okay, thank you guys. Cool. Good, good, good. Okay. Good, good, good. Um, well, we only got a couple minutes left, so I, I would say, you know, I want to leave uh, the audience with, um, with your thoughts on if you had to kind of point to the next significant leap in AR, something that's like definable that you can actually see. Like Pokemon Go was a leap forward. People saw yeah. it and they're like, wow, this is a thing. What do you think that next step is? You said that you're already 10 steps ahead, but what's the next step that the general consumer is going to see, experience, and embrace? Um, I mean, uh, I don't know. The PR people are in the room for Niantic, so I have to say <laughs> Harry Potter uh, is coming out this year. Uh, but, <laughs> um, but at least in terms of the next experience, um, one, getting through past the AR gimmicks in the current market, um, and then being able to explore, hey, developing as more game loops begin discovered on um, both some of them I know internally to Niantic, at least we're predicting, but then as other people are creating off of it, as developer adoption gets past the initial hype curve and through the trough of disillusionment, and then kind of having these actual experiences that begin to interact with the world. So I think it is the interaction with the world will be the next step. Um, I, I think that mobile is a stepping stone to headsets where you can be, begin to experiment with it. So I view that you're gonna see a gradual increase in the types of applications, probably not anything like huge earth shattering, like in terms of, like Pokemon Go flipped the whole industry from VR into AR. Um, I think that now there's enough interest in AR that the next major thing is gonna be as the technology platform begins to change um, and whatever timeline that that is, that's the whole prediction but making sure that kind of how people are beginning to interact with the world and then how to, as a new platform develops in the coming years, then that's gonna be a, a major shift. So not just throwing Pikachu down on a digital <laughs> Google map, but actually throwing Pikachu down on this stage right here. As on this stage, but then the interaction with not just the world, but also people in it. Mm -hmm. So like if kind of you walk up and then someone's taking a video of you and the Pikachu can walk up to you. Yeah. Um, like that's a much more magical interactive experience because in the gaming space, kind of part of what we're doing here is fulfilling the fantasy of the users. So I was down in LA like last October and then they're like, oh, is Pokemon Go really AR? And it's like it, it delighted hundreds of millions of people all around the world to kind of imagine that there's Pokemon in the real world. It's about creating that emotion that people have and in the gaming space, like that's extremely important. Very cool, man. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really thank appreciate you. it. Uh, thank you guys very much. Again, if you're on that alert, go outside right now.